The insect spirit will then slowly consume its host, while transforming it into the spirit's own insectoid body, thus manifesting itself fully on this plane. What's this have to do with a great dragon and an elf who likes cosmetics? Funny kid, but it's no laughing matter. This is bigger than hunting down an insect shaman or putting a few 9mm rounds into a bug. The initial bugs prepare a, a nest for the summoning of a queen. Once a qu nest has its queen, she literally explodes with newly manifested insect spirits. They swarm out of the nest, feasting on all the flesh they can find, and implanting more, spirit more insect spirits into the fresh corpses. Again, and again, and again. The room falls silent as they all consider the scenario. Faces grim. Telestrian breaks the silence. This is not an infestation, Flandry. It is an invasion. Mein Lord Laufrier knows this day would come. Oh, God. I am so sorry to any German person watching this, but... <laughs> he did not know precisely when nor where. Your rescue of, Mrs. of Mr. Telestrian's daughter has exposed the existence of an insect spirit for the first time in this cycle of the world. Yeah, the insect spirit is like a harbinger of the rising mana levels. As the mana levels get even higher, bigger stuff will eventually start to come through. Even nastier stuff. Then why don't you just fire a cruise missile at the Brotherhood and call it a day? You have engaged the enemy. You know why. The, in the in insect spirit is only a resident in the transformed host's body. Conventional weapons can hurt the body and expose the spirit, but the spirit itself exists on two planes. It cannot be destroyed by mundane means. Hence, Project Aegis. Herr Telestrian's biotechnology and agricultural divisions worked with my Lord Laufier's thaumaturgical engineers and designed the Project Aegis to destroy an insect spirit once it is released from its host. The formula, a fl fluorescing astral bacteria strain, exists in the physical and astral plane at once and can thus affect the insect spirit. Now that was a mouthful, especially in that ridiculous accent the Let's Player was doing. <laughs> Did you memorize it, or are you reading it off index cards? My director of R&D, Diane Ravenwood, will explain how Project Aegis will be used in the field. Dr. Ravenwood. Our weapons specialists have rapidly prototyped a delivery device for the fluorescing astral bacteria strain. They've created some prototype launchers which fire Aegis-filled shells. When fired, the shells will discharge a high-velocity stream of the bacteria. In order to destroy one of the bugs, it must first be damaged using conventional weapons or magic until the spirit is released from the host body. Then the insect spirit must be shot with the Project Aegis prototype launcher to destroy it. <laughs> one, of the, one of our dialogue options is, So in order to stop an invasion of insects from another dimension, a dragon and an elf co-created a magical insecticide. I'm going to go with that. <laughs> Crudely put, but accurate. We must stop the Universal Brotherhood from summoning a queen, and we must stop them immediately. You are the only one who has been inside their facility, and the only one who has personally fought these creatures before. That, along with your highly effective assault upon my property, indicates that you are the ideal person to lead the attack. What makes you think this Project Aegis will actually work? Harlequin. He grins and his red lipstick catches the light. Because it has to. Come on, kid. When fate taps you on the shoulder, you've got to pay attention. Unfortunately, she has the nasty habit of tatching, tapping you on the opposite shoulder, so that when you turn around, she's on your other side, giggling like a deranged schoolgirl. I hate that. Enough. Are you willing to undergo this mission, Flandry? You had me at killing bugs. <laughs> Show me how to use Aegis and I'll get it done. Excellent. Harlequin claps his hands as if seeing the circus for the first time. I love the way that the short-lived are willing to die even faster. It's very inspirational. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, like I said, he's an elf. Elves are douchebags. It's a constant across fantasy universes. Yeah. It's true. Herr Brockhaus. Hans Brockhaus. Brockhaus raises his hand and Harlequin's clapping instantly stops. There is one final note. A warning, if you will. You have seen the danger the insect spirits represent, but you have not witnessed the shaman's power. The shaman must tap into a powerful source of magic in order to summon a queen. We do not know what abilities that power source will grant. Beware of the insects, but do not underestimate the shaman. 
Ooh, received 10,000 Nuyen. Harlequin. Nice. Hey, don't scare... Hey, don't scare the kid, Hansel. <laughs> we, we still need him to go on the mission. By the by, I'm coming with you, Flandry. I wouldn't mind seeing these creatures for myself. I missed them last time. Okay, yeah, I think that's, that might be the only in-game hint at how old he actually is. Hmm. Tel Telestrian will bankroll you so you can hire the rest of the team. Find me when you're ready to go and we'll bug right out of here. <laughs> Telestrian, James the Telestrian III, he sighs. Yes, speak with Harlequin when you are ready to depart. If you wish to acquire additional supplies for your mission, find my assistant, Quoth. He is highly resourceful. All right, karma gained, eight. Just from talking? It was a very good conversation. It was a good conversation. Let's talk to Herr Brackhaus. I wonder if you can get different levels of karma based on the conversation. Sure. Hans Brackhaus. We did not allow many opportunities during our briefing for you to ask questions, Chateau You may ask them now. I am so sorry once again. <laughs> How did the insect spirits get here? When the membrane between planes thins, the insect spirits reach into the mind of a shaman and begin their manipulation. Playing on weaknesses and offering unlimited power, if the rituals to perform the bring the spirits here are performed. But once the shaman takes on an insect spirit as a totem, they begin an inevitable decline into insanity, slowly losing their humanity. Eventually, the shaman completely succumbs, choosing the contentment and clear purpose that being part of a hive provides. Perform your role. Serve your queen. That is all. Know your role and shut your mouth. <laughs> that, okay, I want that now. German the Rock. <laughs> if Laufvier had seen this before and knew another was coming, why didn't he move faster? Based upon the previous cycles of magic, the first insect spirits are not due to appear for another 700 years. My lord Laufia believes he believed he was well ahead of schedule. Something is different this time. It is concerning. Why do you think it's different this time? Perhaps it is due to the population of humans and metahumans on Earth being so much higher than in previous ages. As a result, the volume of magic created by sentient beings is correspondingly higher. Or perhaps it is the density of the population coupled with the advances in society that has altered things. Magic has never returned to a world like this one before. The density of sentient creatures, coupled with the density of information, coupled with a new concept, the technological persistence of memory, heightens a society's existential angst. Thus, more people realize how truly horrible existence is, simultaneously. <laughs> that in itself may be a form of magic. Lovefear is studying the question now. I'd forgotten on that line. Thus, more people realize how truly horrible existence is. Simultaneously. <laughs> a cheerful guy, this Brockhaus. What's it like to serve a great dragon? The German man's eyes narrows. Do not misconstrue my relationship with Lord Laufvia. I do not serve. Okay, I think that's the only hint of that he actually is him. Where do the insect spirits come from? As the level of magic in the sixth world grows, the, for lack of a better word, the distance between the various planes of reality decreases. When the membrane between the planes is thin enough, ritual magic may be used to draw beings from one to another. I should go. Yes, good luck. Well, that's a fun guy. Let's talk to Algernon, like, what the heck's he even doing here, you know? I guess he's they provide uh, spells, spirit foci, or fetishes to help you on this critical quest. I have a question first. Speak it. Were you spying on me at the seamstress's union? His eyes widened at the question. You mistake your importance, Flandry. No, I was not spying on you. Until Mr. Telestrian summons, you were beneath my notice. I saw, I saw only a customer. Ouch! Now, do you require my magic? Are you really here? I think he's asking, like, if he's, like, an astral projection or something. Are any of us? <laughs> oh, Algernon's face takes on a dreamy expression. Are any of us? Yes, Flandry, I am here. And at the Seamstress's Union. And a myriad of other places. And a myriad of other places. 
including Shadowrun Dragonfall coming soon for. <laughs> oh, oh no, I'm not. No, he is in Dragonfall. Oh my god. It's and, he, and his his and they give no explanation as to why he's in Berlin. He just is. And he's he's and he's still awesome. On to the work at hand. Do you require my magic? Who are you? I am a peddler of magical spells, spirits, and foci. Nothing more. Truly? No. Do you require my magic? <laughs> Can I see what you're selling? Well, I have really nothing I can buy, but let's take a look at some of the high-level spells just so you can see what they are. Powerball 3, Confu Monoball 3, requires spellcasting 6, armor 3. Target gains plus 3 armor, lasts 4 rounds. Fireball 2. Aim 3. Increases to hit chance 18%, lasts... Oh, wow, lasts 6 rounds. Blindness. Target is blinded for two rounds. Cannot do anything. Flamethrower 3. Does 25 damage. Monobolt 3. Area of effect does 16 damage. Yeah, you can get some pretty powerful stuff by the end of this game. If you're a Chi Adept, Magic Resistance. Th magic Resistance 3. Passive. The Adept gains a heavy cover bonus to magical spells. You have to have chi casting 10 for that. Damn. Yeah. Let's head back to my karma. Drone combat 8. Got seven more karma to spend. Let's hold off on that for just for a moment. Okay. There's um. Yeah, we can talk to his daughter. It's Marie Louise Tourette Celestrian. <coughs> I was listening. It sounds bad. Yep. Thank you for everything. Could be worse. Could be raining. She smiles. It's Seattle. You look like you have a question. Why were you locked up at the Universal Brotherhood? <coughs> Father didn't approve of my boyfriend and tried to scare him off. Something went wrong and Harkeem ended up in a wheelchair. Father covered the whole thing up and lied to me about Harkeem. He told me horrible things. Her jaw clenches. And I believed him. Remember what he said? Remember he said that little cripple? Yeah. And remember what I said about Telestrian being really, really not being a nice guy? Yeah, yeah. He he, disapp he disapproved of his daughter's boyfriend so much he had him paralyzed. That's extreme. Oh, it sounds like something like maybe like they weren't actually trying to hurt him that badly, but you know they were trying to hurt him and they did. I thought you were gonna say that sounds like a wrestling storyline. That would be <laughs> it does kind of actually, but. My Aunt Lynn... My... Now I want, like, Vince McMahon in the Shadowrun universe. That needs to be, like, a... You know, this game is highly moddable. Someone needs to make a, like, a mod of... of like, a, you know, a mod scenario with that. Oh, man, I would pay so much. <laughs> my my Aunt Lynn told me the truth about Harkeem and how my... Oh, remember, Aunt Lynn, she's that creepy elf lady who's part of the cult? Right, yeah. My Aunt Lynn told me the truth about Harkeem and how my father lied. She preyed upon my anger. I was so disgusted with him, it was easy for her to get me to leave and join her new family at the Universal Brotherhood. So yeah, you know, the cult, like, you know, targeting people who are, you know, alienated from their loved ones. What did Lynn Telestrian and the Universal Brotherhood want with you? Aunt Lynn was very excited to have me there. Almost manic. She talked about the inner circle and how I was going to be at its center. She said I would be their queen. The way she spoke, it was as if she'd seen God or something. Her eyes closed and she hugs herself tightly. But it's not God she sees. It's bugs. Only bugs. Was it Harkeem who helped you in the Matrix? She smiles. In love. Yes. Even after my father ruined his life and convinced me to hate him. He's still been watching over me. My angel in cyberspace. Baron Samdi. After we escaped, I told Harkeem about the Brotherhood and about the bugs. 
It was his idea to steal Project Aegis so you could go back into the Universal Brotherhood and exterminate the bugs. But I don't know how he knew about it. Baron Samdi just knows things. So what did Harkeem tell you about us breaking into your father's office? Nothing. Nothing. I haven't spoken to him since last night. Why? What happened? It went as pl He hasn't contacted you? No, and I thought he would by now. Did something happen to him? We, we could say, I'm sure he's okay, he was in the Matrix the whole time, or last I heard from him, he'd been made, they were coming for him. He did... Let's be honest, it sounded like, it sounded like he was in danger. He might be in danger. They? You mean my father? A look of horror crosses her face. They? You mean my father's people? That's right. I'm... I'm sure he's okay. They probably just took away his deck. Father wouldn't... No. He's okay. I should go. That got awkward. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, I, I hope that dude's alright. He was, he was pretty cool. Yeah.